Hi, I'm Bill Boggs. I welcome you to this program, which is a follow-up to the one you just saw on teenage suicide. This is a teenage news conference on that subject of teenage suicide. Gathered with us here are uh, newspaper editors and radio reporters from their various high schools and colleges, and we just all sat through watching the program. In addition to having them here with us, we have two special guests. Uh, on my right is Barb Wheeler, right here, who is the, uh, ex the mental health, health executive you saw in that uh, one hour program and on our left is Linda Otto who is the producer of the show welcome I thank you very much for that effort in making this production and I hope that what we do in the next uh, half hour here is to give all of you who watch that program an even better insight into I think the one big question about this epidemic of teenage suicide why all right first to ask one of the uh, the questions that was also asked in the program among all of you how many of you just raise your hands know someone who has attempted a suicide. Raise your hands, please. So you can see, watching at home, that we have a lot of first-hand experience at that. Thank you very much. Also, I want some of, uh, some of your reactions to the program. Uh, I'll just jump up here in the audience. Yeah, just hop right up. Tell me where you're from. What's your name? I'm Chris, and I'm from Brentwood High School on Long Island. Tell me, what did you think of the show? I thought it was a fantastic show. It gave you a lot of information about teenage suicide. And I'd like to ask Barbara a question. What is done in a situation when a child has tried suicide, has failed at it, and then the situation continues with Erin, nothing happened. She left the room and her father wanted to know what was going on. He couldn't communicate with his daughter. What can be done in that type of situation? Okay, Erin is under therapy in Omaha, and she's in a group session. If you saw in the movie the session that was done at Richard Young Hospital, and there's two types of therapy. Usually there's a, a family type of therapy, and then there's a one-to-one. -one. She's in a one-to-one, -one, and now she's moving into a family setting. So her whole family will be worked with to teach them how to live together again and how to communicate together. That's very, very important that follow-up is done, particularly with the whole family. All right, good question. Another reaction. How about something on the negative side? Somebody else didn't like here. Stand up, would you please? Step over here. What's your name? Dan Renberg. I'm from Horace Greeley High School in Chappaqua. Okay, your reaction to the show? Well, I, I liked it. It was definitely moving. Uh, my feelings were, though, it didn't deal with as much ways to prevent teenage suicide as much as the uh, looking back at it. And I was wondering if maybe you could comment on that. Well, let's go to Linda on that one since she's the producer. Well, what we tried to do uh, to begin with was to expose the problem because it's never been exposed, at least to my knowledge, on national television. Expose the word epidemic and create right. and underline that and say epidemic of teenage suicide. Okay. Once people, uh, once families and their kids are talking to each other about the possibilities in their own families and their friends' families, then we can talk about how to prevent it. But just to go in and say you have to prevent teenage suicide without saying what the situation is and and what a problem it is in this country, I think wouldn't have been enough. And one of the things I, my reaction was, I was very shaken by it. Uh, and of course I knew I'd have the opportunity to, to, to work on what you just said. I sort of agree with you. I think it is important to get to the why of it. I think like many adults, I have this reaction. That is how can somebody with all that life ahead of them feel that they have to, that things are so bad that they have to end their life. And I think it's, it's difficult for adults to remember when they were teenagers frequently and remember some of those elements of depression. Any of you want to comment on that to an adult who might be watching now, an adult who says, how can somebody with their whole life ahead of them decide to take their life? All right, you, please, stand up. Where are you from? Middle College High School. My name's Joanne Pachanka. Comment on that. Well, I feel that they forget that times are changing now and we have more pressure than they had. You know, like most of the students that I go to school with have had bad experiences, you know, considering like peer pressure. And it's a lot worse now with the peer pressure. And, you, you know. really think peer pressure is worth, worse now than it was before? Why? As relating to drugs and stuff? Well, not really relating to drugs, but in relation to like everybody wants to conform more now. Everybody wants to be in with the in crew. And it's like really bad because. It's hard to conform when you don't really want to. Listen, I think a lot of parents listening to that, uh, you know, a couple generations removed from you would feel, gee, those, those were some of the same problems that we had. Yeah, well, that may be so, but um, back then there was a different kind of pressure. Like now we have more openness with drugs, more openness with sex, and it's generally, like, harder to cope with it. Uh, well, what about this for anybody, Barbara or, or anybody? What about, what about the question of 
trying to convince someone your age, a teenager, about time, that time really does heal wounds, that you really can move out of that seemingly intractable, difficult position that you're in. What do you say? How, how can you help somebody like that, Barb? Well, I think, first of all, I want to support, uh, uh, make a couple comments to what, is it Joanne? Yeah. To what Joanne said, one that we talked about a little earlier, is when you open up options to people, it means for more decisions. <coughs> And these kids are raised in a generation where there's hundreds and hundreds of options that are open to them that weren't even open to my generation. Right. And this is great and peachy and fine, but the but, more options you have, the more decisions you have to make. And who and was really confusing. trained to teach kids how right. to deal with all those options? Right. And I think parents, for the most part, try very hard to be good parents. But sometimes we don't know how to. And in response to Dan, one thing I want to really emphasize, the way to prevent suicide, in my opinion, one of the ways to prevent it is through education. That's what I hope the film shows. Our Omaha public schools have allowed us to do educational programs in the school system, and we've lowered our suicide rate. I can't emphasize enough to people, to your parents, to your kids, to everybody. Demand programs in your schools to help you with it. All right, let's let's make that a main point of what we're doing right, right now on Channel 5 at this point. I think if you were as moved, I think as many people probably were, by the program we just saw, make it convert that emotion into action right. tomorrow. You can do something and about find it. out what, if anything, exists at your school. And if not, then get on the phone, get your friends calling, get your friends writing to, to get some, put some programs in gear. I know the Omaha system is almost a model system in the country. You had a question. Let's take that question. I have a question. I had a comment. Comment? Go ahead. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Tom. Um, where, is there a last name with that, or is it just <laughs> plain Tom? Uh, where are you from, Tom? Uh, Middle College High School. Okay. And... Uh, I was just going to comment that you said about the schools and how you have programs and stuff. Most of the problems come from the schools. It's uh, mostly with the classes and uh, the pressure that, you know, you know that turn you to drugs maybe and depression and, and that causes, you know, suicide. And uh, to have it in the school, ha having programs is pretty good. Our school doesn't have that. Our school has um, programs to alleviate pressure. We have programs like um, career counseling. We have... Um, Career planning. Are they working? I mean, oh, sure. are, have there been many suicide attempts in your school? I doubt it. Really none, that you, none you know of? Oh, yeah, sure, I know of. But uh, more in other schools, I think. So you think that you're, you're endorsing programs sure. like we, this? We, we have kids in our school that uh, come from other schools and would never have made it unless they came to our school, you know, which is pretty good, good. I think. All right. I'm going to just move over here because this is a teenage press conference. I have to make it as fair as possible. I'm working in the round. Question or comment? Okay, stand up, please. Your name? Julie Smith. I'm from Monroe Woodbury High School. I think one added factor is that this is a very fast-moving society, and like you know, everything is fast, fast answers, fast, you know, like fast. Instant moving. gratification. Yes, and a lot of expectations come out of this type of society, and for a lot of people, for especially teenagers, when those expectations aren't met as quickly as we've become accustomed to, then. I, it seems to me that a lot of them choose the way out because they're not willing to wait. And I think if more emphasis is put on the fact that not everything can come quickly, not, you know, instant answers aren't always the best answers and they're not always around, then maybe a lot more people wouldn't try suicide. I think that's an, a very astute point as it concerns to society in general. I would relate some of what you're saying to the divorce rate in this country. It doesn't work the first year. Get out. Forget it. Try something new. Thank you. Good point. Yeah, question or comment here? We have two, two people associated with, yeah. Jackie Rose, I'm Morris High School. I would like to ask, what would you do if you have a friend in a situation of suicide, and how can you help them? I think most important is to listen and to allow them to talk about it. Give them permission. Whatever you do, don't make fun of them. When someone comes to you and says, I want to die, it's not a matter, you know, a laughing matter. Take them seriously. Take them seriously. We never know how much pain someone has. And maybe what's pain to me isn't pain to you. And what this person is saying, they're not saying, I want to die, I want to end my life. They're saying, I want to end my pain. Mm -hmm. We take the drugs, we take the booze in order to end our pain. We feel good for a while. Sometimes we attempt suicide. So listen, give them the opportunity to talk through it. If you don't know what to do and you don't feel comfortable, get someone who does. All right. Barb, there's something else I'd like you to do uh, that you told me that was behind the scenes on this, that the one un sad case of the young man who did shoot himself, who did die, whose father eventually looked in the window in the basement, right. he was there. Right. Tell, just tell us quickly about that example of how he gave the big hint to his mother when they were shopping that day. 
Well, I think sometimes we give verbal and nonverbal clues that people miss that they don't they aren't aware of. This particular boy, one of the things that his parents talked about to us was probably 30 days or so before he killed himself. Mother wanted to take him shopping one day and she said, "Let's go get some new shirts." I don't like the way your shirts look, Chris. And he said, I won't be needing them. Don't bother. Save your money. Now, it um, sounds yeah. scary to hear that now, and but that wasn't clear. She didn't question that. She didn't say anything about it, you know. But for some reason, he said this. I won't be needing them. Don't bother. Mm. Let me continue with some more questions and comments. Yes. I have a comment. My name is Avian Ramos, and I'm from Morris High. Now, I know that in a person's life there's always a time when you feel depressed and maybe all of us don't decide suicide on the way out but i feel that for all of us our parents and our close ones are the most important and that we are the ones who should try to to let these people know that there are other ways besides suicide to 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 the solutions to your problems you know, especially the close ones, if you have a friend who has a problem, you, I think, is your responsibility to let them know that there are other ways besides killing yourself. I would like to now, of all the people here, ask this, and then the first hand I see I'll go to. At the beginning of the show, we talked, I said, how many of you have know someone who has attempted suicide? Many hands went up. I would like to talk to somebody in the audience who helped a person who was in that situation. I saw your hand go up first, so I will just scoot right over to you. Tell us, what was the situation and what did you do? Um, she was having problems with her parents. They were putting all kinds of pressures on her and things like that, and she didn't know how to you know, cope with it. So she came to me and she asked me for advice, and we sat down. I locked her in my room because she had a whole bottle of pills in her pocketbook that I didn't know about. And I took them, and I flushed them down the toilet. Okay. We sat How did she room. react to that, excuse me? She got mad at me. <laughs> she hit me, I mean, hey, you know. And I locked her in my room, and we began to talk. And she started just pouring her heart and soul out to me. And I sat there and I listened. I didn't understand some things she said, but I didn't let her know that. OK, I just went along with everything she said. And when I gave her advice, I gave her about the best I could. She's alive today. <laughs> oh, She's OK. Good. What, a, what a good woman, Wait, really. That's wonderful. Tell us, what is your name? I'm, from, I'm Gwen Robertson. I come from Evander Chas High School. Okay, I think that that said it all in terms of opening up for communication. I'd like to add another person in that same category. If I can get to you, just move down the aisle, please. Now, you had some experience with someone who attempted or was going yes. to attempt. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? My name's Liz Luciano. I'm from Madawan High School. The girl that I helped is, um, she's a very pretty girl, very intelligent, very talented. Her problem was that she just didn't basically believe that about herself. And it took several months of therapy from professional people who knew what they were doing to get her to finally believe this. And um, now she does, and she's on the right track. Well, what, how close did she come to suicide, and what did you actually do? Was there a moment when you really felt you, you or other friends helped prevent it? I don't know if she was actually at that point, but she was very, very depressed. She went from being this outgoing, wonderful person who was friends with everyone to not talking to people, wow. not eating, pretending to faint, mm -hmm. and um, we knew we had to help her, and we did. While we're on that, Barb, can you just run? I know that there are many symptoms of somebody who was uh, possibly on the brink of making a suicide attempt. Run through some other symptoms. It's very important, I think. Uh, one thing that she just mentioned to us, which is very important, is change. If you can remember the word change, anytime someone has a change in their behavior, going from being the outgoing student to one that backs out of things, going from looking good physically to suddenly not looking good, we call that inimicality, lack of self-worth, not feeling good about yourself. And we like to look good for people. We like to dress up and things. So when we stop doing that, it's important. And another beautiful thing that the other girl said over here that helped the person, taking the method away from them. She took the pills away. That's extremely important. The reason for that is people will say, gee, they can get more pills tomorrow. Sure. But right now, they're afraid of those things. You ever been afraid of yourself? And they're afraid of those pills. They're afraid of the method. So it's important to get that away from them 
when they're in the crisis. Yeah, the, the words of Barbara Wheeler, who is a mental health educator and also a consultant to the Omaha Public School System. Hi. I'm trying to get some examples of personal situations you've been in. Hi, I'm Susan Court from Westfield Senior High School. Um, all these people have sensed that there was a problem, but one night I was home and I got a phone call from a friend of mine, and she was at a house. She said, oh, my God, uh, so-and-so's in, locked herself in the room with a bottle of pills. What do I do? And I went nuts. I didn't know what to say. What would you do in a situation like that? I just tried to, you know, calm her down and tell her to, you know, to talk, to, you know, talk to her through the door and stuff. But what would you do? Well, first, what happened? She's okay, but, you know, she just convinced her to come out of the room. Okay, so... But, you know, all these people have sensed a problem, but if you haven't sensed it, what would you... Okay, that's good with somebody really on the brink. Do you want me to respond yeah. to that? Okay. Uh, basically, you did exactly the right thing to the person who was with him did by trying to tell him, you know, I'm here, I'm available, I want to listen, I want to help. There are other alternatives. Let's talk about it. Suicide is something you can't take away from anybody, but it doesn't have to be done right now. So let's find some other options. Let's go some other directions. Let's talk about it. And basically, that's probably what happened. They were able to talk her out, you know, of her situation. I wasn't sure if I did the right thing, but, you know. Well, I think the fact that she came out of the room oh, yeah. must have indicated you did something right. But that was a good question, too. That's